My name is Dr. Doug Corley. I'm an active gastroenterologist at Kaiser Permanente in San Francisco and a researcher at the Kaiser Permanente Division of Research. Well, there had been a great deal of interest in anti-acid medications because for a couple of reasons. One is, is that they're among the most commonly used medications in the United States. And the second is that uh, people have to take them for a very long period of time. A couple things had raised a question with uh, acid suppressing medicines is that they may actually change how you absorb certain nutrients or certain foods. And so the question came up was whether or not, uh, in fact, these uh, change in uh, possible absorption of these uh, led to uh, any negative effects. One of the main ones of these was calcium. There had been a small study that had looked at people who were taking calcium supplements and if um, taking an anti acid medication, randomized, uh, led to changes in how the calcium was absorbed. And those people taking the medication actually had much lower levels of absorption of this calcium supplement. And so um, this led to the question then of could, in fact, these medicines taking them for long term give you an increased risk of problems such as bone fracture or osteoporosis? Um, there, this has been somewhat controversial. There have been a couple of studies on either side. And so what we elected to do uh, was to do a, a, a very large study um, in a very well characterized group of people over a long period of time and evaluate whether uh, there is an increased risk of bone fracture, mainly hip fracture, in people who are taking anti-acid medications. The overall method of looking at this problem was a case control study. So we looked at cases. We had about 30,000 patients who had had a hip fracture. And then we matched those to a similar group of people, uh, the controls, uh, who had not had a hip fracture. The main findings were that um, people who had hip fractures were more likely to take these medications than people who did not. Um, the way that this is measured is the odds ratio for case control studies. This gives an estimate of the risk. So the estimate of the risk was that there was about a 30% increased risk of these medications causing hip fractures uh, compared with people who were not taking the medications. This is for proton pump inhibitors. Now, there was about an 18% increased risk for what are called H2 blockers, a slightly weaker medication. This is about what we would expect. The stronger medications seem to have a stronger association. The weaker medications seem to have a weaker association. The second thing that we found was that this increase in risk was entirely within people who had at least one other risk factor for hip fracture. Um, so how do we take this to uh, our practices or what should patients do? Well, the first thing is, is that you shouldn't stop your medications. These medicines are used for a reason. Uh, they are used to be able to either treat symptoms or treat inflammation. But in general, this is true for every medicine, uh, it's probably best to be on the lowest effective dose, not more than you need, but to be on what you need. And so you can check with your physician on whether or not you're on the appropriate medicine and on the appropriate dose and whether or not you're taking what, what you need or if you might be able to, uh, to do okay with uh, less or with a, uh, a less potent medication. The second thing is that it appeared that most of the risk was uh, associated with hip fracture in people who already had other risk factors for hip fracture. So if you do not have any risk factors for hip fracture, then you are not at increased risk. And the study really didn't apply to that population. If you are at an increased risk, well then there probably are things that you should be doing already. Uh, the suggestion is, is people who are at increased risk of hip fracture uh, probably should be on uh, calcium supplements or at least have adequate calcium intake uh, and likely also uh, be taking some supplemental sources of vitamin D. Uh, if the mechanism of this association is what has been hypothesized, which is that it, uh, these medicines may decrease calcium absorption, then just those acts may also help uh, with improving your calcium absorption regardless of whether or not uh, the final results of this study are, are proven um, through, through other trials. The main things that we need to do in the future are to evaluate in a little bit more detail whether or not um, these medicines actually do change what's called the calcium balance the amount of calcium that comes in versus the amount of calcium that goes out and whether that contributes to osteoporosis. And that can be done without necessarily having large trials, but it can look at individual people who are taking these medicines for periods of time and see whether or not on average they're losing calcium. And there's ways of being able to do that and there are some plans for those types of studies that are underway.